Thank you, my brother. It is now time for questions. Um, you want to sit or stand for the questions? Okay. No, you up to you. No, stand. Okay. Stand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, first question is going to come from our brother there, and the second one from our brother over there. All right. And then you. All right, those three. Yes. I wanted to ask uh, about the, the Commonwealth, for instance, the Commonwealth of Nations as we call it. Uh, it would seem to me now that it, it, it's no longer, it has no benefits as it used to. For instance, we used to have open borders between South Africa and the UK and all of those other things, trade and so on. All of that has shifted. Our, our biggest trade partners are not necessarily the United Kingdom anymore. Our borders are no longer as open as they used to be. What do you think is the necessity? Is this still a necessity of the Commonwealth, or is it just a, a commemoration of what was the old order? Well, I, 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 in the first place, I don't think there was a need for such a body. It's rationally, I mean, to be organized along colonial lines and convened by the former colonizer, it can't be. If we want to relate as comrades, as people who fought against colonialists, let's find our own way of interacting because we almost share similar experiences because we're under the same colonialist, but not convinced by the same colonizer. They, they still treat us like subjects. I mean, we come here, we have to apply for visas here. And then they come for breakfast there in South Africa and come back uh, in the afternoon. They come in the morning and then, and then come back in the afternoon. We can't do the same. Why? Because we are not equal in their eyes. We are the subject, they are the colonial masters. We are the slaves, they are the slave masters. So it doesn't work. It's not working. And I think that the African leadership should decide. I mean, we had a debate about that in the, in the ANC when they introduced the, the visa thing. It's not so long. I mean, it's 2011. So recent. And we, we were firmly saying we need to impose visas as well on those people. Uh, because why do we have visas? They say no. The African brothers who don't come from South Africa come to South Africa to get IDs and come here. That is not their problem. It's our own problem. It's our own African problem. Whether they come for IDs there, they don't come for Africa. It's an African problem. Let's solve it through African solution. You cannot impose visas because you want South Africa to introduce a harsh and uh, some regulations to control access of Africans into South Africa so that you avoid them getting IDs and coming to London. So I think that it's not working. We, we ought to create new bodies of countries that share similarities and experiences and countries that want to do trade with each other. I think Africa should open its borders for trade. Because if we do that amongst ourselves, we can be a big economy. We've, we, we've got minerals, we've got a lot of things they want from us which they don't have. And if they trouble us, we can just trade amongst ourselves and force them to come and beg us. And when they beg, we tell them, this is how you're going to do it, through our own conditions determined by African states. Thank you. The question of land redistribution. Because without land redistribution, there is no freedom for our people. Please. Absolutely. The, the first non-negotiable cardinal pillar of the EFF is expropriation of land without compensation. Because land was taken... <laughs> land was taken through genocide. And therefore, compensating land is equal to compensating genocide. So you cannot pay people for committing crime. Crime must be punished. And how do you punish it? You punish it through taking what rightfully belongs to us. 
I didn't touch it here because I know that that's a subject all of us share a very clear a perspective. And the message I share with you is not a message that I'm only relating it to you and when I meet the captains of the industry or when I meet these uh, white people I change. No, I don't change. I tell them directly that this is, what, this is what is going to happen. The message has been consistent. We had a lot of uh, a fight with uh, the owner of uh, Investec. What is his name? Steven. Uh, he says to me, you must tone down your rhetoric, and then there's going to be too much investment. I said, who are you to think you can tell me what to do? I don't take instructions from the so-called investors. I'm not sure what's happening. Now, 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 I think I can do without this. Okay. So, the, the reality is that we, we, we must stop pretending to the free market capitalists. We need to tell them open and they accept us for who we are or they reject us. Because to create an impression that things will be done according to how they want it, it's not going to happen. Uh, uh, we are going to again fall into the same problem of Madiba and them compromising a lot. I mean, the ANC was formed to reclaim the land. That's what led to the ANC's formation. In 1912, it was uh, after the wars of dispossession. People fought as small uh, African groups and got defeated. And then they said we need to form one umbrella body. So we are united to confront the same enemy and reclaim our land and our wealth. That time, wealth was cattle. Because it was long... Uh, so. Those people came together. When they came together to reclaim this land and cattle, it took long. People started to concentrating on things that do, do not really <coughs> matter, like political office. It's not about political office. It's not about Julius Malema becoming president. If land gets to be achieved without the EFF in power, then the EFF must lose shop. We are made. We don't care who delivers land. As long as land can be delivered into the hands of the people. That's what we need. Not leadership that is so obsessed with wanting to be in power and using rhetorics. We said to the ANC, ourselves, when we arrived in parliament, we've got 6%. And the ANC has got uh, 61%. We said to the ANC, here is your six percent. We'll give it to you. On condition you tell us that you're going to amend the constitution and expropriate the land through the law passed through a democratic means. We'll vote for you. Here's the six percent. You go around telling people for you to take the land, you have to amend the constitution and all that. Here is the sixty-six percent. 67 actual. Yes, 67 percent. Let's amend the constitution. Stop being cowards. Let's take the land. They went for cow under tables. Hey, we don't want uh, that percentage from the EFF. That's how committed we are. We are not saying the opportunistically land must be taken by the EFF. No, anyone. EFF is here to support you as long as you take land back into the hands of the rightful owners. Now they say to us, yeah, but you don't know what you are going to do with this land because you don't know farming, you don't know mining. We said, we said to them, it doesn't matter what we do with our land, it's our land. Whether we want to mess it up, whether we want to mess it up, it's our own problem, it's not your problem. So what I do with my car now, if I live, when I leave this place, you can't say to me, oh, you are going to bump this car, you don't know how to drive. No, it's my car. Let me finish it if I want to finish it. It's not your problem. So we want our land, and it's not like they found this land idly. We're working on this land before they arrived here. That's how they realized the potential of this land, that this can be a beautiful land. So we want them to return the land 
then we can be friends and talk about how do we move forward. I must say, I must say, um, I, I was a skeptic, naturally, but uh, I must congratulate you for firstly not capitulating, because I thought you're coming to the UK and you probably want to appease uh, the investors and, and that, that kind of business. But um, I, I guess I'm a practical, so I just yeah. really need to find out in, in terms of the legislative framework and things that we need to do at a practical level to achieve uh, this transformation and how do we prepare our people at a practical level for the backlash? I mean, we have Zimbabwe as, as, as a clear example. So there are a lump and messes who, when things start going on a slippery slope, they will naturally react in a way that is, you know, uh, that they feel jittery. So I guess at a practical level, I just need you to table out those kind of uh, methods. How do we take over industry? Uh, the upskilling of our people, those kind of things. Uh, that's my question. Thank you. No, no. Uh, you know, pain, pain uh, change is painful, and uh, so South Africans will have to be prepared to go through the necessary pain. You know, um, I don't know labor pains, but women will tell you that they are extremely painful. But immediately they've <coughs> delivered. They don't even wait for two days to appreciate the beauty they've brought on earth, having gone through that necessary pain. So, we have to go through this pain. Because once we've delivered, our people will come to appreciate that indeed it was a necessary pain. Let me start with Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, once it comes around, and once illegal sanctions imposed on people for their political will are lifted, Zimbabwe is going to be one of the best exemplary states of what black people can do if they own their land. Because the Zimbabweans as is now, they are surviving under those difficult conditions. Imagine if conditions were favorable and the imperialists were not using their economic strength to suppress political differences, Zimbabwe would have been one of the best countries. So we want to live to a day where sanctions are lifted in Zimbabwe because land is in the hands of the people now. So no one will return that land back into the hands of the colonialists unless that person wants to fight with the masses mm -hmm. and the people of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So there's no one who's going to do that. So in South Africa, we want to engage with capital in such a way that it doesn't get a shock of its life and a surprise. We say to them, Let's go into partnership. You give Cyril Ramaphosa shares. He is an individual. It means you can give this community called workers shares. So we don't want you to give individuals shares. We want you to give workers and communities shares. And they are like, but why would this, what, what, what will this workers bring on the table? I said to them, what did Cyril bring on the table? <laughs> it didn't bring anything. So we want to work with them to transfer the ownership of our economy into the hands of the people. We want legislation that will speed up land transformation into the hands of the people. We want in the mines and the banks and monopoly industries, government to take control and use that to finance the state program of changing lives of our people. So we have a problem because our government relies on taxes to finance the state program. It doesn't have an alternative method to raise extra resources to finance this expensive program 
of the state, which is to look after the masses. And even the taxes themselves, companies are no longer paying. They've taken billions and billions of rents out of South Africa into tax havens, mm -hmm. avoiding to pay tax. Mm -hmm. So you don't own with them, you don't control them, you hope they will give you tax, they still don't give you tax. They avoid it in South Africa. So the best thing, introduce tighter control and ownership. It's possible. In Botswana, the BS company that mines diamond has given the Botswana government 51%. But when it comes to South Africa, it doesn't want to do the same. Why? We're in the same region. Why? And you can see that they are actually misleading the Botswana government. Because they just say 51%, but they don't declare all the diamonds. They declare a smaller portion and say, this is your 51%. The rest of it gets out of Botswana illegally, and they make more money than the state of Botswana. Why? Because Botswana government is not involved in the control and ownership. They just have shares. So we also want to be inside. We want to know how many diamonds came out today. <laughs> Register them so that we are not victims of uh, capitalism because capitalism anyway inherently is a criminal activity. So if you leave them unchecked, you will have a big problem. Yes, my sister. Okay, first of all, I want to say thank you because um, you, you're very clear, um, and I'm not someone who's very political, as you, 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 you might want to put it, but my, my question is, and I'm glad of what you just finished, um, capitalism, um, what I want to understand is what form of government are you looking to implement? Because if it's capitalism, then obviously we know that the history of capitalism came out of a European ideology. And we know that the thousands of years that they have been in Africa until they've got to here, the pinnacle of it is capitalism. And if, we're, if, you're, um, if you're going to be governing African people, obviously, who have a tradition, what is the form of government that you're looking to? No, I, I, I don't subscribe to uh, those uh, perspectives of African democracy. And I believe that the uh, democratic method of electing your own leaders mm -hmm. is the best system ever. There is no any other alternative except subjecting ourselves to the will of the people. We must never impose ourselves on the people. But government once elected through the popular will of the people, it must then take control of the strategic sectors of the economy and don't leave them in the hands of free market capitalists because theirs is not to develop anyone. It's not only <coughs> black people. Theirs is not to develop anyone. It's to get the majority to enrich the rich. They say everything is free. Don't do anything. Don't tamper with ownership of everything else. Let capitalists do as they wish. Because through that, you make the rich more richer. And there is nothing that makes you rich by making the rich more richer. So they, 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 they create an impression that by making the rich more richer, you are going to be rich. But there is nothing like that. So we want a decisive government that respects human rights, a government that is accountable and leaders who are elected out of the will of the people and we must have a term of office. Whether it's 15 years, whether it's 20 years, I don't have a problem with that. Let every country decide how they want to be governed. I don't have a problem with President Mugabe in Zimbabwe being a president for such a long time. But I wouldn't want that for myself. But Zimbabweans have chosen him for themselves. It is their choice. And I ought to respect that. In the same way they respect an unelected queen here. No one tempers with their arrangements here. And therefore they must not temper with anyone's arrangement. In South Africa, one president for two terms, I'm happy. In Britain, 
They've got a prime minister and the queen is their own arrangement. They are happy. In Zimbabwe, they've got President Mugabe like that. They are happy. Who am I? I can't go around imposing myself on the people. The will of the people should at all times prevail. No one should use military to impose himself or herself on the people. No one should use state institutions to intimidate those who've got a different view. I think it is possible the world can be a better place if leaders respect the wishes and the will of the people. I mean, uh, one of my best heroes is Fidel Castro. He has been in power for a long time. And <coughs> I've had an opportunity to meet him. And I still admire him and his courage. Uh, uh, but it doesn't make me want to stay in power forever. These positions are not nice. <laughs> uh, to work for people is the most stressful thing. I never get to see my son. Every time I see him, he has changed completely. <laughs> but he must know that we have a duty to serve the nation. Yes. And if I can make a contribution and they say to me, that's it, stand aside, let this one take over and continue with the revolution, I'm happy. Well, the time is short, so ask your question nice and sharp. Don't make speeches. Your time.